everybody welcome back to my channel so today I'm gonna do a rundown explanation video of all the different versions of Chanel number no. five you can get Um, I totally get that it's quite confusing when there are perfumes with the same name but different versions different sizes different bottles and it's like okay so which one do I want to buy here like what's the difference so that's kind of the purpose of this video if you're new here, then welcome to my channel. It's all about perfumes. I have new videos up every week, so do subscribe if you are a big perfume fan like me. And as always with my videos, the perfumes I talk about will be linked down below for US and UK. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the Chanel No. 5 fragrance was created in 1921. It's the famous um, signature Chanel scent that Marilyn Monroe wore and that has been iconic throughout the decades. When it originally came out, it came out as a pure perfume, as an eau de toilette and an eau de cologne. So let's start with the pure perfume, which is still available. So this is the most concentrated version. It comes in quite a small bottle and it's not a spray. It's something that you can, you sort of dab on from the bottle. Um, it's almost like a syrupy version of the what you're used to it's not quite as liquidy it's a little bit thicker and the smell at the fragrance is much more concentrated so the main fragrance note that you get in all the versions of Chanel number no. five is aldehyde which is kind of like a ozone-y airy um, type smell it, it is very unique to Chanel number no. five and it's really associated with this fragrance because this is kind of what made that fragrance no famous you also have quite a lot of ylang ylang in all the Chanel number no. five you've got iris and jasmine as well some rose and then in this parfum version this pure perfume you have amber as well and that's something that isn't in the others there's a fair amount of woody mossy notes in here this patchouli and there's a note called I think civet or cive, um, which is from an animal. So I think that's now been replaced and it's now a synthetic that smells the same, but it gives it that kind of muskiness um, that you get from like animal products and perfume. Um, but predominantly what you're getting here is a floral amaldehyde and the parfum version means it's got that amberiness, intensityness. It's the heaviest of all the Chanel number no. five versions. So Chanel number no. five Eau de Parfum, which is probably the biggest seller now, which comes in the bottle that you'll recognize from all the adverts, was actually only released in the 80s. Um, Eau de Parfum as a fragrance for number no. five was created in the 80s and released. It wasn't part of the original releases. It's not what Marilyn Monroe was wearing. So the aldehyde, ylang ylang and jasmine are all back. Um, that iris is back as well. But I would say this is a bit more vanilla a bit more rosy than the parfum version um so it is still fairly heavy but it isn't like a a strong aromatic smell it's it's like a heavy ozone-y floral-y type fragrance so quite classy unique it, it, you know you get that that it's chanel number no. five straight away there's nothing else quite like it and very very classy i can imagine someone wearing this walking around harrods you know walking around knightsbridge like a very high-end smell they've also added some bergamot and some peach into the top notes which you do get a little bit in the first sort of 10 seconds one and then they die out but i guess that makes it a little bit more modern and adds a little bit more freshness than the pure perfume version has. So the Eau de Toilette version, where this was released with the original Parfum in the 1920s. Um, so this has, I guess, stayed the same since then, even though I'm sure Chanel have reformulated number five over the years to update the ingredients, to get rid of animal products, things like that. So again, you've got the ozone, ylang ylang, the iris really dominating. But because this is an Eau de Toilette, it's going to be um, a bit weaker. It's something that perhaps you could sort of spray all over or spray and walk into a bit fresher than the Eau de Parfum um, and it's not going to last as long because it's not as concentrated so you're probably going to get up to four hours out of the Eau de Toilette. 
um, because it's less concentrated you can get this a little bit cheaper so if you're someone or you're buying this for someone who you know sprays a lot then maybe the eau de toilette's better and the sort of long um, slim shape packaging means it's quite sort of durable it can go in your handbag for you to top up during the day so in 2007 we got Chanel number no. 5 Eau Premiere with Nicole Kidman as the face of the perfume and the idea was that this would kind of reinvigorate the number no. 5 fragrance. It's supposed to be a more modern version of number no. 5 and I think it is more modern. It's much more simpler. A lot of the heavy notes have been taken away so the aldehyde and the yang ylang are still the dominant notes. But there's a lovely neroli here, so that sort of lemony plant that you get in sort of Mediterranean countries that comes through that makes this a bit fresher. And then you get the vanilla and the rose and the mossy woody notes that we know from Chanel, all mixed in with those aldehydes and ylang ylang. But I really like the fact that neroli is quite strong in this one, so it makes it again. Um, something you could sort of walk into spray all over. I think it only comes in a 150 ml bottle and um, so quite big so I think the idea is that you do sort of go for this and spray lots of it rather than the parfum or the eau de parfum where you probably only need a few sprays or a few drops. And then finally in 2016 we got Chanel number no. 5 low and the idea here again was the refreshing of the number no. 5 fragrance to make it more fit for millennials, the younger generation. I'm not sure how successful that has been but I think if you do like that aldehyde smell and you do like ylang ylang and you are a millennial then this will be the perfect perfume for you and you don't want some of the what's often associated with more old-fashioned notes that are in the um, Eau de Parfum, the Eau de Toilette, the original fragrances. So here they've added lemon, orange, lime, bergamot, loads of citrus notes. So when you first spray it, you really do get a citrus hit. It's a classy citrus. It's not a sharp or a like in your face citrus, but you do in the first spray, it is quite refreshing. Whereas I wouldn't really describe the other versions of number five as refreshing. Then you start getting the aldehydes, the new rollies back, and a musky center. So if you took out that aldehyde, it would be a very like citrusy perfume. But again, the aldehyde is the dominant note, so it is that ozone y airiness to the fragrance. The base is cedar, vanilla, and rose, um, but they really are um, much more fainter than in the other versions. So it does live up to its name of being sort of fresher and a low version of number five. Um, so definitely want to try if you haven't tried it. And um, interesting to compare it to the Eau de Parfum or the um, Pure, Pure Perfume because it is fresher and lighter. It is a little bit more fun and younger. To complement all the number five range, there are a load of different um, body uh, complementary products you can get, like soaps, body lotions, shower gels. I think you can also get little purse sprays. So loads of stuff you can do to layer this. Perhaps if you know someone likes number five, you want to get them a gift, um, but you don't want to go into the sort of 50 pounds plus that it's going to cost you for any of the perfumes, then perhaps a good option would be to get one of those complimentary body products, which are going to be more around the 30 pound mark-ish. I will leave them linked down below as well. So that's it. I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think of Chanel number no. 5 and all its different versions. And let me know if you'd like me to do a video like this for any of your other fragrances that you like. I do love doing my range reviews. And I'll leave links below to similar videos um, where I talk through the ranges of other um, well-known perfumes. But that's it. So thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.